Good morning, Sally. Lovely to be back with you after a break. Yes, Harry, and what have you been up to? <laughs> well, I went up to Newcastle and picked up my TARDIS. Your little boy toy? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to go to Alice. It's too hard to get through South Australia. Yeah, at the moment, hopefully that will change. And mm. you've just shown me a sort of a walkthrough of your new TARDIS. It's absolutely beautiful. Brilliant. And I bet you just can't wait to jump in and go somewhere around New South Wales then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's sunny down here in Melbourne, believe it or not. It's, um, yeah. You and you've been out for your walk. You've been out for your prescribed escape. Yes, yes. One hour a day. So got up early and it was chockers actually. So, yeah, it's um, challenging. But anyway, doing it. At least we get to get outside. And it was sunny this morning. It's supposed to rain the rest of the week. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. Keeping my mental health right, which is our topic. And that's, that's your topic for today, isn't it? Mental health. Mental health in, in a very high level way. I just wanted to bring it up because I'm, as a, I'm doing a mental health first aid certificate. I'd never heard of those. And through a business at breakfast that I attend with you, I met someone who runs these courses. And I thought, look, I'm, every year I have to do my first aid and that's always really important. But I thought mental health first aid would be really good to have in this current climate. And just to, to upskill a little bit more on, on what mental health first aid is about. And it's basically about recognizing, you know, and what to do when people aren't quite their, their normal mm. selves, which mm. is <laughs> for a lot of people now, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit of a challenging time, particularly in Melbourne. I mean, generally the stats are one in five mm people in Australia in any given year have a, a mental illness, a kind of mm. illness. So one in five is fairly high, wow. 20%. Yes. So, that, you know, that encompasses anxiety or depression or substance abuse disorder. Um, yeah, so what else does it cover? Bipolar disorders and, um, yeah, so one in five is fairly high. And I would hazard a guess that it could almost be reversed that now I don't know, four out of five, I don't know. It is challenging for people, particularly with the isolation. Isolation is sort of fueling some issues, I think. Yes, yes, it, it is. And I'm just fiddling with the light, so. <laughs> okay. the so that you just look In case perfect. you wondered what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I think what struck me the most out of doing this course is that the median onset age of anxiety is the age of 15. And then it got me really thinking about kids and teenagers. So yeah, yeah. Um, I was shocked that it was that young. And, and then when I think about my own kids and their peers and kids in general, a lot of anxiety stems from the school ages. So you would see a lot of that, Harry. Hormones. I mean, I think I got most depressed yeah. around that time. And I think it's because it's just so hard with all the hormones. You don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you knew what you were, but you don't know where you're going. So I've got some stats today. I've actually got quite a lot of stats. It's amazing. I love that. Bring them on. So the Black Dog Institute, which is one of the helplines, report in Australia that 20, between a quarter and a third of people are reporting increased anxiety levels. So feeling more anxious. Yeah. About one in three. Now, there's an ABS survey at the beginning of the COVID um, impact. So it was published in June 20. Yep. And that they, by a woman called Fisher and a team, um, 13,800 survey. And they found the incidence of mental health problems has double, doubled during COVID. Doubled. Whatever, whatever there is normally, it's now double. And, and I think when I look at when I look at the age groups affected is probably millennials and, and aged people who are the hardest hit, but the aged people are more secure financially. So it's really the millennials that we're worried about. Yeah. Yeah. There was an ANU study of over 3000 and they found that the big issues were social isolation for yep. millennials and also reduced employment opportunities. Right. So uh, those aged 14, those aged 18 to 24, the, the, the uh, percentage feeling distress, so distress is quite a strong word, rose from 14 to 22 percent and 25 to 34 year olds went up a little bit less, 11 and a half to 18 percent. 
What was that again? So from age 18 to 24? So those aged 18 to 24, those feeling distress went up from 14% to 22. Yes. Almost a quarter of feeling distressed. Yep. Those 35, 25 to 34 went up from 11.5% to 18%. Wow. But there's some good news. The yep. good news is the media is dominated by the American experience. Yep. But in Australia, we're more hopeful about the future than Americans. Yep. And this will, this conveys us resilience. I was just a bit, I mean, Aussies are very resilient. Absolutely. I think, you know, I'm so proud of everyone with, you know, pushing through. Yeah. Um, it is challenging, but yeah, it's like, that's what I love about my walks because people are laughing, you know, they're, yeah. they're laughing and you can walk with another person so you can have a chat. And yeah. so it gives you the opportunity to be connected. With I can't have chat, even if I find her. <laughs> I know. And I keep saying I've got this pash rash from the mask. Oh, yeah. oh, it is hard to talk, but I'm getting used to it now. It's just I'm like, actually a bit worried that you're not wearing your mask now, sorry. Yeah, it's like having a sauna on your face. <laughs> Funny, yeah. So you do have to laugh about it, and that is right. And and you're right about the media in general. It's it's not <laughs> helping the situation. It's not. <laughs> and Patrick McGorry, who is you know Australian of the Year, he's he's talking about second wave impacts. And really, it's in Victoria. Yeah. So there are increased numbers of people drinking alone. Yep. Um, they report about twenty five percent of relationships under stress, and this is important because relationships protect. Yep. Yep. Lots of people that are deferring mental health visits to their GP. They, they're not doing it, did you say? They're deferring them. Mm. You know, how do I get there? It's too hard. Yeah, too hard. You can go hard. out. Yep. Um, 60, in these second wave effects are, are stronger. 60% of millennials feeling under pressure. And 35% of millennial relationships are under strain. So these these are not anxious or they're just feeling the stress, feeling the pressure. Feeling the stress, absolutely yeah. feeling the stress. Um, and the groups that I think are most at risk are, and it's over the other side, which I just got to get my bit of, are those healthcare workers. Yeah, yep. Travellers who are impacted by quarantine, and those people who are unemployed or with casual work, those without sick leave. Yep. And of course the elderly and the sick. So I met, you know, I met a friend who um, is a very accomplished professional who um, met him yesterday in the wedding room. And he's just not going out because of health status. Yeah, and, yep, yep. And really careful. So. Yep. He's just doing work via Zoom, and Zoom has its problems. It's very stressful because, you know, I, I, I'm diverging a bit, but there's, have you heard of these neurons, neurons called mirror neurons? Mirror? Mirror neurons. No. They are so cool, Sally. <laughs> really? They, they've discovered that when monkeys this is where they first discovered them yep. when monkeys do something these neurons fire up when monkeys look at other monkeys doing the same thing but they're not doing it the same neurons fire up wow and when the monkeys hear other monkeys not even see but hear them do this thing the same neurons fire up and these are the neurons that allow us when we see somebody smile yep. we automatically smile so we like these these are very cool so they're really strong we don't really there's lots we don't understand about them yep um there's some thoughts that those some in the spec on the spectrum have disconnected mirror neurons right right because when you smile at them you get this deadpan response but they're certainly really important for connecting yeah 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 anyway so on zoom you know your mirror neurons are just overloaded i think <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean i'm on zoom all the time and it's it's exhausting, <laughs> exhausting. it's exhausting it yeah. is exhausting it's yeah. just draining and you have to after a couple of hours just get up and walk away so i did a model for you this morning so oh, did you i love it when you model for me harry <laughs> cut down 
media consumption. So be cautious and calm about your media consumption. Yep. Yep. If you're at any risk of anxiety, I'm a bit anxious at the moment because my bow tie's gone a little bit crooked. Oh, not third world problems, Harry. <laughs> Second thing is connect kindly. Connect yeah. with care. Yeah. And the third thing is cherish your well-being. Absolutely. Yep. Look after yourself. So my three steps are stay connected because positive mm -hmm. relationships protect your mental health. Yep. They're really powerful protectors. And then establish a productive daily routine, whatever that is for you. Yep. I think that's really important. And then the third thing, which is just awesome, I love it. I really love it. This is the key. Identify and grasp the opportunities that COVID offers you. Now, it could be the space to write a book. Yep. It could be the space to actually spend some time with your kids. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yep. Bill, you know, there was a wonderful example. I saw a YouTube about a family. They didn't do any homeschooling. They just said, bugger off to the school. <laughs> what do they do instead? They build a vegetable patch. Oh, yeah, nice. And they build a compost heap together. And they, yeah. they will remember that as a family for the rest yeah. of their lives. Yeah. Love it. They build an online program, whatever it is that turns you on. Yeah. I do a carpentry. You know, build a table. Paint a picture. Well, you know, clean the house. That's what I'm doing. T room by room by room by room. It's just like the best. It's the best. When, when you've cleaned the house, paint a wall. Yeah, 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 do yeah. An abstract, do an abstract art wall. Be creative, right? Be creative. Yes. Love it, love it, love it. It's really good to turn it around like that, Harry, because as I said to someone the other day, I actually love this because there's so many positives. But <laughs> just the general vibe is just, it tries to drag you down. But there are so many positives like that. Sleeping in, you know, having more flexibility with your time and, um, you know, going back to basics, So, which is really, really cool. I did a model two, which is very similar to yours, but um, mine was, well, in my little circle ones, communicate, communicate your feelings to people. So, you know, be good or bad, but just chat, you know, just let it all out. Um, you know, do things that make you calm. So to reduce your anxiety, you know, have a bath, be creative, you know, get out in the garden, whatever it is, but- um, Go for a walk, you go, go for Go for a walk, listen to music, um, you know, meditate, you know, it's all the fun things, you know, even just being calming down by watching Netflix and watching something like that. I don't know. I've been watching Farmer Wants a Wife and that's calming me down. I like that feel good stuff. Um, and then the third one is connect, connect with others to reduce your isolation. So even if it's via Zoom or whatever it is, reaching out, because then when you're calm and connected, you can gain greater control back into your life. When you're communicating how you really feel and then reducing that anxiety by staying more calm, it, it builds up your confidence within yourself that you'll be okay, you can get through this, it builds up your resilience. And then when you're connecting with others, communicating your feelings, you're reducing the conflict with yourself and with those around you. And overall, you're just feeling a lot more content. So that was my little model. I had some other notes here. Where is it here? So I think I got this from Beyond Blue. Was, no, mental health first aid, teenage tips for mental health during COVID, you know, and, and as you said before, have that daily routine with consistent sleep activity and your study patterns, because that, that makes it really tricky that um, slacking off. We had parent-teacher interviews last night, and um, it's interesting, you know, the teachers are, are trying really hard, but they're feeling the pinch of trying to connect with the kids and, you know, easing off on some of the... Um, <clears throat> I don't know, expectations, I suppose. Um, another thing was they said stay connected with others and find moments of humour, you know, where it's to have a laugh. Because um, I hosted a, a, a Year 9 Mums coffee morning via Zoom the other day and they said the thing missing for the kids is the fun. It's the fun and the laughter and also the exercise, just that group rapport of hanging out, having a laugh and, and keeping the footy together. So, you know do as much as you can to laugh um talk to people about your things about your worries or how you're feeling eat breakfast every morning and eat at regular times throughout the day rather than just grazing all the time and of course including increasing fruit and veggies and all the healthy food um for teens limit alcohol and other drugs um because they just um, can become coping strategies and also limit caffeine and caffeine because it's fueling the anxiety or the energy drinks. 
What else was good in there? Do lots of um, physical stuff to let go of any anxiety that can build up and limit the amount of time watching the news, you know, social media as well, because it's just in your face here. I just, I don't know, even I don't watch TV, but been watching that Farm Once a Wife. And, you know, news breaks nonstop. It's just like flashing across the bottom. How many cases? What's happening around the world? I don't, it's like it's too much. Um, um, do, you have, do you have a video recorder? Yeah, yeah. So I fast forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's still there. So it's like, I don't want it in my face. It's like, I don't know. Um, and then just do things that can calm you down or focus your mind and body, you know, yoga, music, journaling. That's another good one. This would be an interesting time to reflect back on your journal 10 years down the track of what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. But um, yeah. yeah, and I think the, the final thing was be kind to yourself as you just go through this process. Um, yeah. some good tips. I, I, I just think, you know, a whole lot of this homeschooling stuff, Yep. I'm not convinced that focusing on the academics at this moment is that productive. I'm 110% with you, 110% with you on that. You know, and I know that's that's the script that the teachers are yep. seeing, yep. but I'm not sure yep. how much wisdom is underneath that. But, and as you said, that bonding together, you know, if you go out in the backyard and, and do a worm farm or build a compost or build a veggie patch and... You know, build a tree house, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, too, you know. So you've got access to outdoor space, which a lot of people do. Yeah. Especially, although, yeah. And uh, you know, if you've got a little community at home, use it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Well, we've got what another four weeks to go, just a bit over four weeks, and and then it'll be interesting coming out the other side. <laughs> so. Um, oh, I so. remember when I used to sort mail. Oh, yeah. When I, it was my Christmas job two years in a row, and I went to the GPO in Melbourne. Yeah. And we were sitting in this enormous room, and at one end there was this enormous chute, and the letters would pour down out of the chute into this enormous conical pile of mail, yeah. which was about four or five metres high. It was massive. And we would sort, yeah. and more letters would come down. Yeah. And it never got any smaller. <laughs> Christmas time would be full on back in the days. And then they brought me, it wasn't very motivating. And then McKinsey was brought in. Yeah. The post office, my goodness, the post office then was, had a few issues, I can tell you. <laughs> anyway, um, I think it was level, level four or five down the bottom. We weren't allowed to go to as students. So I think it was like full of people just, you know, there's a lot of alcoholics down there. Anyway, yeah. passing over that. Um, McKinsey suggested... At the start of every shift, stop the flow of letters into the pile. So that as you went through a shift, the pile gradually diminished and yeah, there was yeah. nothing at the end and you felt you'd done something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess a lot of people are wondering, well, what happens if this outbreak doesn't get controlled and is it going to go on for how long? Yeah. And what am I going to do? And yeah. so on. Yeah. It's the uncertainty that's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um. And it's just staying in the present moment because mm. it's just going to fuel mm. the anxiety. But I think that's a really good point of like just stopping. You know, we are always talking about stopping, but, you know, you've got a workload. And so this week I've taken a couple of days off because it was just morphing into another day ending with why, another draining mm. day. And I thought, well, I can actually be smart and compact it into a couple of days and have a couple of days off so mm. I can clean the house properly and do the other things that have been annoying me. So, yeah, it's it. being creative about doing things differently, Harry, as we're coming out of it, so that it does mix it up. So you have some sort of achievement, that you, sense of achievement. And My uh, case looks a bit tidier, actually. <laughs> that is the one that I haven't got to that yet. <laughs> I think you've done some work. It, it looks a little different. But yeah, it's a work in progress. Well, yeah. as I can empty out. Like even culling all the kids' books, it's breaking my heart. But, you know, there's stuff that we don't need to hang on to all the time. So. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> I was just looking. Yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I've got a house of books. But um, coming back to this mental health thing, what, my, what I would say is that, you know, the last step, and I found this quite funny, is 65% is of people don't receive professional help when they do have a common mental illness. And it's about there's all different factors about you know reaching out but as you said before it's just it's all too hard at the moment to sort of get your gp or whatever but that's just encourage people to just reach out if they're feeling a bit crappy 
So Sally, it will be important when you put up this to put some phone numbers up. Yeah, people. absolutely. So we've got Beyond Blue, Black Dog, Lifeline, Headspace, Kids Helpline. They're just a few yeah, that are out there. So I'll definitely put those up um, on our yeah. post, Terry. And they're, and they're, they're great resources. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Beyond Blue's brilliant. All of yeah. them are great. So yeah. for all the different groups, you know, teenagers, older people, where, wherever you fit in, there's, there's always some information out there and people to reach out to for sure. Yeah. Good, good. Good on you, <laughs> Good on you, Harry. I can't wait to, to see Harry and his travelling band stories coming up next. <laughs> the Adventures of Harry. <laughs> yeah, I did I did do a video, but it was just, I'll send it to you. It's quite <laughs> uh, okay, beautiful. We'll go and have a great week and I'll yeah. see you next week. Yeah, yeah. you too. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you next week.